Greetings everyone. On the bench today is my ailing Radio Shack VFD calculator. Bought this off of eBay a few years ago. And uh, it's a neat little calculator. I like these vacuum fluorescent displays. I like to have the little LED ones. I have the little bubbles magnifiers over them. Um, they're from the 70s, mid 70s I think. But anyhow, I went to use this the other day, and it's dead. It won't turn on. I checked the batteries, and they're good. So uh, we got a problem here. Uh, Radio Shack date code A6. It's, this is from 1976. First showed up in their 1977 catalog, which would have come out in the previous year. In other words, uh, around August of 1976. So yeah, this was made in Japan, probably by one of the calculator companies, Casio. I don't know who made it. it looks like. Uh, George E. Smith owned this calculator. Kind of be neat to uh, know the history of the person who had this. But anyway, it's not working right now. Calculator history is kind of interesting. Uh, these little pocket calculators, they started coming out in the early 70s. They were very expensive. Um, the earlier ones were, I don't know, $150, maybe $200. And around the mid-70s, the bottom dropped out on the market. There's a lot of companies that got in, and the price wars, and the prices just dropped out. You know, they were making standardized chips, and it lowered the cost considerably. And this calculator cost, I think it was like $25. They had a uh, cheaper model. It was the same thing without the memory. And it was uh, even less. I don't know, $15 or $20. But yeah, the, the price just dropped out on these things. And, uh, and it caused uh, kind of like the uh, video game apocalypse of the 80s. But it was the calculator apocalypse. Of course, in the early 80s, the video games kind of dropped out, but came back again. The Nintendo Entertainment System kind of brought it all back again. Okay, so I'll use my Tektronix meter here. Uh, need to probe around. I checked the batteries. They're still good, so we have a definite problem with this thing. Kiss Analog sent this meter in to me. Really appreciate that. Uh, you should check his channel out. He does a lot of test equipment videos, and he does get into audio. He has a series about how Class D amplifiers work. You might want to check out his channel and subscribe. I'd think he'd have more subscribers than he does. It's just you don't know when your channel is going to hit critical mass. There's another channel I watch called Bob's Decline. He's a Canadian lineman. I watched his channel for about a year and a half. Yeah, he had, when I first started, he only had like a thousand subscribers. Well, just a few weeks ago, his channel just exploded. He had like 9,000 subscribers, and within about a week, it jumped up to over 20,000 subscribers. Somehow he got into uh, YouTube's algorithm and got recommended. So yeah, I don't know what the magic formula is to hit critical mass, but... There are some channels that I think should get more attention than they have. So, yeah, you might want to check out his channel. Okay, anyway. Let's check this out. Let's make sure. Let's see here. I can't see it. I go, okay, this is the uh, link side and this goes actually into the meter. Sometimes there's hidden corrosion. So if I touch the uh, terminals, 
make sure I'm getting not the battery terminals but the terminals on the calculator 2.6 volts it's hard to do this through the camera viewfinder am I getting the uh... okay after fumbling around a little bit I am getting power on the terminals that this one did have a little corrosion on it but no nope, that's not the problem I'm gonna have to open this thing up and where's the screws at I don't feel any there's a tab maybe it's maybe it just pops open usually stuff in the 70s always was screwed together not like the Chinese snap together stuff, but oh, there we go. It just pops apart. You get the blue plastic for the uh, blue, or kind of, I guess, cyan. This thing pops out, I guess. There it is, the VFD tube. Hopefully the little cathode heater. There's a little wire in there. You don't really see it, but it heats up and not very hot. I kind of doubt that would burn out, but it could, I suppose. There's the chip. NEC. There's the little transformer. It boosts the uh, voltage for driving the tube. Because, of course, the battery's only going to give you up to 3 volts. Okay, well, I can't do this through the viewfinder, so I'm going to probe around and see what I find. Well, that didn't take long. I'm moving this around. I'm going to probe the connections. This wire here that goes to the negative battery terminal has broken off. How did that just break off? I mean, it's not like it's moved or anything. It's not really a moving part. But, well, that's what happened. It connects to, I guess, that center connector right here. That hole in the board. So uh, I'll probably get a new wire and solder it here and here. And see if I can get this thing going again. Okay, I went ahead and just changed that wire out because it looked like the joint was bad here as well. So yeah, I don't know how that would break so easy, but it did. Turn it on. Look at that. Just like I bought one. Another thing I noticed here is Toshiba. So I guess Toshiba was making calculators then. I love this meandering layout of these traces here. Look at that. We're back at it again. Do my power calculations for my audio amplifiers right on my little VFD calculator. This has a neat little trick. I found it out myself. If I hit the square root and four keys at the exact same time, you get pi. So what's happening is somehow I'm matrix decoding. You know, these keys are scanned. And when I hit these at the same time, I'm hitting a pi key that's obviously, there's no pi key, but it's part of that chip and it just decodes that button press for pi. So yeah, just kind of a uh, neat little trick there. One more thing before I close it out. I have this old Canon camera, PowerShot A800. A few years ago I took it apart and removed was called the hot mirror. That's just a piece of glass with a coating which 
blocks infrared light from reaching the sensor and when I took that out it makes the camera sensitive to infrared light so if I use this to shoot the screen you should be able to see that wire that cathode wire that glows so let's try it out okay on the old camera here lovely standard definition up oh, the batteries are dying so I better do this quick there you go not gonna focus very well but you can see the hot cathode wire running across the side there well I guess I'll wrap it up for this one thanks for watching